Hi everybody, it's reactions of carboxylic acids and esters. So finally, what do they do? What do esters make? And what do carboxylic acids make? Let's find out. So carboxylic acids, here's the three main things that carboxylic acids do. And then making anhydrides, there's two versions. So acid-base reaction, you heard about this in the last video when we talked about properties, but carboxylic acids are acids, so they react with bases. This base is sodium hydroxide. Um, and they make salts, so this is a salt, and water. Okay, so that's the main reaction. A carboxylic acid reacts with the base to make a salt and water. This salt is called sodium benzoate. So the second part of the salt with the ion is, we've already named those, those are carboxylate ions, and you just say the name of the metal first, okay? So acid plus base gives you salt plus water. Here's another example. So this time we have uh, ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid, also known as acetic acid, and the base is sodium hydroxide. And so we have our acid and our base, and we get salt and water. And this is sodium ethanoate, but there's a common name for it too. So here we go with, um, well, the common name was acetic, uh, sodium acetate. So here's another acid-base reaction um, that you may have seen a commercial for or heard about it, or we used duck seltzer in chemistry a couple times. So this is called citric acid. It's a carboxylic acid. It's got three carboxylic acids on it. And so we need three equivalents of base. And the base is um, sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking uh, soda, sodium bicarbonate. OK, and so look, main ingredients, uh, sodium bicarbonate and anhydrous citric acid. So why aren't they reacting when they're in the tablet form? Well, they need a medium to hold them called water. OK, so when you put them into water, this is what happens. You get all of the H's of the acids come off and all of the metals from the bicarbonate go on, and so you get sodium citrate and carbon dioxide, and that's the bubbles. So um, it really does make carbonic acid, but carbonic acid then breaks down into carbon dioxide and water. So fun times. All right, so what else do acids do, carboxylic acids do? Well, they can dehydrate um, with other acids, so dehydrate. We saw hydrolysis means add water, so dehydrate means take, so take away water. So if you take two generic carboxylic acids, so we could have as many carbons as we want there, if we have the, um, if we use the same acid twice, we get a symmetrical anhydride. So carboxylic acid will dehydrate, so one, so I'll draw the other carboxylic acid. Whoa, a little shaky here. All right, so we have two of them. If we take the OH, and the H, we get water, right? And then the two um, carboxylates come together. One of the O's is gone, so you make your anhydride. So that's one way by dehydrate. So this is the dehydration of two acids. You can also use a carboxylic acid and an acid chloride, okay? So then what happens is this time, we get the H and the Cl combining to form HCl, but you still get an anhydride. And notice the um, however many R's came in on this carbon, however many carbons came in on this carboxylic acid are on one side and the car carbons from the acid chloride are on the other. So you made anhydrides. All right, so here's an example. If we take acetic acid and we dehydrate it, that means we're gonna get water as a product. And then how many carbons in the anhydride? Think you're thinking about it, and here we go. So we got the two carbons from acetic acid, two carbons from the other acetic acid, so we get the acetic anhydride. Okay, so that was dehydration of acids. What if we use an acid chloride, acid chloride, all right, and acetic acid? This time we get an anhydride that's mixed. We have the two carbons from the acid and then the benzene ring in the carbonyl from the um, benzoyl chloride. All right, one more version of this. Instead of having 
the acid chloride and the acid, you could have the salt of the acid. So yes, there is a metal ion somewhere in here, but this is going to happen in solution. And so this chlorine gets kicked off and replaced by the rest of this molecule. All right, and you make it in hydride again. So this is the acid chloride and the salt of the carboxylic acid. So this is the carboxylate salt. Carboxylate salt. All right, so that can also make an anhydride. Right? Hey, look, it's an example. So look, we have sodium acetate. Oh, this is the carboxylate salt right there. Sodium to carbon acetate. We might have called it ethanoate if we were IUPAC naming it. Okay. Acetyl chloride, you don't have to know the name of it, you just have to know it's got the C double bond O and the CL. So what's going to happen is the chlorine is going to go away and we're going to get a CL. And then the um, acetate ion will be on the other side to make acetic anhydride again. Plus, this time we're going to get NaCl. All right, and the reason I could show the NaCl is because it was here, just like it would have been up there. Okay, so we can make, acids can make, uh, do acid-base reactions. They can help to make anhydrides. The other thing carboxylic acids will be able to do is be reduced. Okay, so we have a carboxylic acid and we use a reducing agent. Another thing, when we talk about reduction in organic, um, we sometimes use this as a generic symbol for a reducing agent. And then what that means is that there's more bonds to hydrogen. So where we used to have two bonds to carbon between carbon and oxygen here, those go away and now we have two H's on that carbon. And so since this is on the end of the molecule, what kind of alcohols are we gonna get? We are always gonna get primary alcohols, right? Why? Because this carbon can only have one other carbon on it or else it wouldn't be an acid, to, a carboxylic acid to start with. Okay, look, it's phenylacetic acid. So. What's going to happen if it hits a reducing agent? Well, the reducing agent is going to react with it and reduce the carbon of the carbonyl to a CH2. Let's see what that looks like. Boom, that's what it looks like to phenylethanol, All right? So again, primary alcohol, and it's a reducing agent, so more bonds to hydrogen. Ooh, fancy that. Pretty cool. Okay, what do esters do? Well, esters are going to hydrolyze. Hmm, that has something to do with water, you bet. All right, but it can happen in acid and it can happen in base. And esters can also reduce. So let's get going. Hydrolysis of esters. So we're going to be taking, hey, wait, I feel like we already did this one. We did because hydrolysis, hydrolysis of esters in water and acid was um, the same for how to make an acid, right? So when you hydrolyze an ester in water, you're going to get a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. It's the reverse of the Fischer esterification. So you already know about this one, all right? So notice this was ethyl formate, ethyl, all right, I'm gonna say methanoate the second time, methanoate, um, which can also be ethyl formate. And then notice you get formic acid or also known as methanoic acid. All right, so um, you get the acid from the O8 part turns back into an acid, and then the R turns into the alcohol. All right, so the R of the ester turns into the R of the alcohol. Here, I'm just putting it in quotes, okay? So here's an ester, what? And it's got it's been going with water, so it's gonna get hydrolyzed in acid because you see the acid catalyst. So what do you think it's gonna make? Well, if you said acetic acid and ethanol, you'd be right. Okay, so the R part here is ethyl. All right, and that's the kind of alcohol you get. The base name, well, it said we said acetate, but it's ethanoate. And then you get ethanoic acid. All right, so we already knew that one, all right? And now we're gonna hydrolyze an ester in base. So um, another word you might hear for this is saponification. Esters also react with bases, 
All right, and this is all going to be aqueous, so it's in water, so that's where the hydrolysis part comes from. Um, but the thing about it is an, an acid, it, um, it, the acid is a catalyst. In base, the base actually reacts. Okay, so we have our ester, COOR, and a base, sodium hydroxide. And then when we're done, we have the carboxylate salt. And whoa, I just dropped my pen. Um, there's a negative charge on the oxygen, positive charge on the sodium, and an alcohol. All right. So like hydrolysis in acid, we get an alcohol. But the different thing is instead of getting a carboxylic acid, we get a carboxylate salt. So the sodium or whatever metal was in the base ends up where the H would be. Okay, so let's look at an example. Look, it's ethyl acetate, also known as ethyl ethanoate and sodium hydroxide. <laughs> What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Well, we're going to get sodium acetate and ethanol. So the R part of the ester becomes the alcohol, just like it happens in acid. But this time, since we used a base, we get the, the salt of the carboxylic acid. Okay, last but not least, what do esters do? They reduce. So carboxylic acids were reduced to primary alcohols. What do esters get reduced to? All right, remember reduction sometimes is seen as H in brackets, meaning adding more H's, or bonds to hydrogen. And this happens a lot in organic reactions when the reducing agent adds more bonds to hydrogen. Okay, so um, here's an ester, and this is the R of the original ester, and that becomes the alcohol, but so does the other one. So what's going on here? All right, so um, I'll show you a mechanism in a second. Let's see if we can apply what we're learning here to methyl benzoate. Okay, so there's our R, so we're gonna get methanol, and then benzyl alcohol as our two. You get two different alcohols when you reduce an ester because you get an alcohol from each part of the ester. Now the part of the ester that um, reduces from the C double bond OO is going to always be a primary alcohol. This will always be primary, all right? That will always be primary. All right, so reduction with lithium aluminum hydride for an ester, will always make primary alcohols from the carboxylate side. Okay, so look, it's an ester, ethyl 2 pentanoate, pentinoate, because mm -hmm, there's a double bond there. So you got a reducing agent. So make sure when you make your summary sheet that you always put lithium aluminum hyd hydroxide for this reduction. Then the H2O, H3O plus is really an acid, so that's what protonates the alcohols later. Okay. Um, oh, look, it's a lactone, which is a form of an ester, but in a ring. And we have reducing agents there, okay? So key, reducing agent, reducing agent, okay? When you see a reducing agent, you think something's going to have more bonds to hydrogen. Okay, so for the first one, we're going to get ethanol as a product. And then this is going to turn into a primary alcohol. So we'll have a one, two, three, four, five carbon. And then on carbon two... We'll have a double bond still. All right. So one, two, three, four, five carbons on carbon two. We have a double bond, and that's where we get our primary alcohol. Now the other one is also going to be primary, all right, because it was just a two-carbon alcohol, and that's ethanol. Ethanol. Okay. That was the R of the ester becomes an alcohol. Okay. So this is an ester as well. So you can look at it two ways, whichever way you want, but really. We're going to get two molecules that kind of break off from there. So when this breaks off, we get this O and we have that O. This O turns into an OH and that O turns into an OH. All right. But all of these carbons are bonded four carbons in a row. Okay. So the part that had the original O's is going to be your primary alcohol. And then the other part is going to be whatever the R was. Okay, so here's our, I'll make them purple, one, two, three, four, all right, and here's one, two, three, four. So the methyl was hanging off of carbon four, and the methyl is still hanging off of carbon four, all right.
And then the carbon that got more H's was the one that used to be double bonded to O. So those are blue hydrogen because they came from a reducing agent and they're on the carbon that used to be the carbonyl. And so there's our primary alcohol right there. Notice this time we didn't get a primary alcohol from the other part of the ester. All right, so how does this happen? You might be wondering. So there's your ester, there's your reducing agent, comes and attaches to the carbon of the carbonyl, okay? And so um, puts an H there, right? Puts an H there, and so now it only has three H's. Okay, so in the meantime, some electrons move around, double bind the O to the C, and break off the um, OR with the aluminum hydrogen complex. Notice this is an aldehyde, right? So what happens with more reducing agent, the aldehyde gets ready to turn into a primary alcohol. Boom, there's our primary alcohol. And then the R prime O, the acid protonates it and you get your other alcohol, okay? Pretty cool mechanism. All right, you don't have to know it, but I wanted to show you that along the way, the um, carbonyl carbon is what gets reduced to an aldehyde and that's why it turns into a primary alcohol. So something that you should know is that your summary sheet should have all of these reactions on it. And so I just took them from the other PowerPoints. The first PowerPoint was making esters and there were three reactions, but you can call it two and have a subcategory or you could call it three. Making carboxylic acids had six reactions, but some people um, did hydrolysis of esters and hydrolysis of anhydrides separately. It's up to you. Okay. Next on your summary sheet are the ones from this. So acid-base reactions of carboxylic acids, making anhydrides, and then reduction of carboxylic acids. Finally, reactions of esters, hydrolysis in acid and in base, and reduction to alcohols. And for your viewing pleasure, a little bit about soap. So it's been a long time since people were making soap. It's one of the earliest chemical reactions that people were using that they, you know, they actually were doing chemistry with. Um, the NaOH is called lye. It's very caustic stuff. If you use KOH, still caustic, but it makes softer soaps. Um, if you want to see what sodium hydroxide can do, I know it was in a movie, but the movie Fight Club, they make soap. So you can, you know, think about the chemistry when you watch that movie. All right, so notice that um, these are fats and they're triglycerides. You may have heard that term triglycerides. And so what the sodium hydroxide does, well, actually what water does is hydrolyze it and turn it into um, a glycerin. And then the sodium hydroxide reacts with the carboxylic acids that form. So it's esters, like C-O-O-R, C-O-O-R, C-O-O-R. Gets hydrolyzed with water breaks this part, well, I guess kind of breaks that part off and makes all these acids. So you get three carboxylic acids and then the sodium hydroxide reacts with them in an acid-base reaction. Kind of like this. All right, so here's another example. Tri triglyceride gets hydrolyzed and glycerol is the name of the, um, the three carbons with the three OHs on it. And then you get two of, so this had 15 total carbons, this had 15, and that had 17 total carbons. So you get two carboxylic acids with um, the 15 carbons, plus the, so really 16, and then 16, 17, 18 carbons here. So 16, 17, 18 carbons, but they turn to carboxylic acids, and once they're carboxylic acids, you react them with base, what? And then you get your soap molecules, all right? Oh, look at all this soap picture, okay? So the one we we're gonna make in class we are going to use olive oil, palm oil, and coconut oil. And so olive oil has this as its um, one of its main ingredients, not ingredients, but um, components. Palm oil has the palm acid and, um, and some oleic acid, so it has both of those. And then coconut oil has lauric acid in it as one of its main ingredients. So um, these are the carboxylic acids that form after the hydrolysis of the oils. All right, fun times in chem. So hopefully you learned a lot and I'll talk to you later, bye.